All right, let's get started on learning a little bit about how you can control sprites. They're going to be a big part of your game. They can actually be a really time-consuming part because you can do so much work trying to get uh, the sprites to look cool and do really interesting things. What we're going to do here is we're going to just work on this person to start learn some of the basic commands. You'll see here, he actually has four sprites. Man right. And when I peek in the frames, it's actually an animated series, which you can see here. Which has him walking. There's also man left, which is just the left version of that. And you'll see there's also man up and man down. What we're going to do is first just see how to change sprites on an object. When the player hits the left key, we obviously want the sprite to change to be the one to the left. Uh, there's a variable already built in to every single object in Game Maker. This variable is called sprite index. And with this, you name the sprite that you want to use. So all I have to do here is I'd like to switch this to sprite man left. When they press right, I'd like to switch the sprite index equal to sprite man right. Now when we check this out and see how this works, you'll actually see that the man is going to have a bit of a... Ah, so it works not too badly there. But of course you have this. The person just keeps on walking. Even though when they're sitting there, that looks a little weird. Of course we're going to fix that. So here's one or two ways how you can fix this. If you can set the sprite, you can also set the speed of the sprite. Now, I'm just going to say when created, I already have this line of code in here, and that is the line there, image speed. That's another variable built in, and that controls how fast it's going to progress through the frames of your animation. You'll see the numbers are usually quite small, like 0.2. If you try putting a number like 5 or 6 there, it's trying to do 5 or 6 frames a step. It's going to look uh, random and weird. So always try little values like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 when you're starting out. And pretty well it's trial and error. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start the player out with an image speed of 0. So no animation. One way you can do the animation is you could do it right here. We could say while they're pressing the key, image speed is 0.2. And I can do the same thing for the other key. Now when we give this a go and actually test what that looks like, you'll see that it's going to start out all right. So no animation. And then I press right, press left. But you're going to see that when I actually let go of the keys and stop, of course, the person's still going. I need a way to know that when the person has stopped, to stop the animation. One place you can do this is inside of the step event. So we know the step event is constantly ticking away running code. So what I can do here inside the step event is I can just quickly say, if speed is 0, image speed is 0. So, this is constantly asking, all the time. And so when it knows our speed is slowed down, our image speed should stop. So let's check out how this works, and then we'll show you a slightly, slightly modified version that's quite a bit better. Now, they sort of stop abruptly, okay, but it is working. Okay, and you know what? For your game's beginner, you may be happy with that. Here's one that I'd like to tell students. That's a very nice, simple line to put in here that actually makes it look way better. I'm actually going to take the image speed out of the arrow keys. Okay, I'll leave changing the sprite in there. I'm going to take out what I just put in step. Now you may say, well, if they hit the left key, how does that sprite start to move and get us image speed? 
here's what I'm going to do. In the step method, I'm going to say a little equation here. I'm going to say the image speed equals the player speed divided by, and I'm just going to guess a number here, 10. So if you stick with me here, imagine this. Let's say the speed of the player was around 5. 5 divided by 10 is going to end up being 0.5. If the player is going slower, like 2, 2 divided by 10 is going to be 0.2. And if the player is moving 0, the speed of 0 divided by 10 is going to give a 0. So what this does is it constantly updates the speed of the sprite based on the speed of the player. Now, 10, is that going to be good or bad? Let's see what happens. We'll see if we have to adjust it. Not bad. As they slow down, the sprite speed slows down. Now, if you think that's a little too fast, what we can do is we can just take this down. You can just try numbers, right? Like 15. Give that one a go. And you'll see that you'll eventually just run a few times, test it out, and that's not bad. So the whole idea there, right? The actual image speed is based on the speed of the player. Okay, remember, we need little numbers. That's why we're dividing by 15. Okay, that's the first part of the video today, and this is basically the nice sprite control. Now, if you wanted to add up and down, that's going to be something you're going to be asked to do in the challenge. Just add the up and down, very similar. You have man up and man down there. And you have your player walking in all four directions. Okay, give that one a go. Thanks for watching.